This video was brought to you by NordVPN. So during the Apollo program, when uh, the engineers were developing the F1 engine that was later used on the Saturn V, it's pretty well known that they developed these problems with what are called thermoacoustic instabilities. Under certain conditions, the intensity of these oscillations became so extreme, the combustion chamber explodes. But it doesn't just explode, but it explodes in a particularly violent manner. It sort of opens up like a tulip. I mean, you can see photos of this thing where it's been, it's been peeled like a banana. This is Professor Miles Bohan, and he just told a very interesting story about how NASA, back in the 60s, exploded a bunch of gigantic and very expensive rocket engines, one after the other, while trying to put a man on the moon. The cool part of this story is that, in doing so, they accidentally invented one of the most powerful combustion engines known to man. What was happening is that these acoustic waves were actually fully coupling with the heat release and forming a detonation. And so they actually formed a rotating detonation wave, we believe, uh, inside the, the F1 engine. So they made an uh, unintentional early rotating detonation engine. Did, did they recognize that? They recognized that they didn't want to do that because the combustor exploded. So NASA discovered what is called a rotating detonation engine. Did they use it to put the man on the moon? No, they used a conventional rocket engine called the F1. It was built by Rocketdyne. To be honest, NASA never really used a rotating detonation engine. But wait a second, didn't I say this engine is the most powerful combustion engine known to man? Why wouldn't NASA use it? Well, that's a good question. But a better question is, what the hell is a rotating detonation engine? To answer that question, we first need to talk about explosions. A regular explosion is what we call a deflagration, is what is used in most combustion engines, including the F1 engine that took the man to the moon. But if things get unstable, you might get a detonation. A very violent type of explosion that surpasses the speed of sound and creates a powerful shockwave. This type of explosion is only normally seen in high explosives, like dynamite. Detonations started off as being a very big problem for NASA, but as it turns out, you can use them to make a very powerful engine. On my last video I built what is called a pulse detonation engine that uses pulse detonations to generate thrust. This type of engine is powerful, but because it's pulsed, it's not as powerful as it could be. The way to go is to find a way to make the detonation continuous. And to do that, you need to make it spin. But what they were actually trying to do was just study fundamental detonations. In fundamental detonations, you have this big long tube. It's very difficult if you have a spinning detonation wave that's moving at two kilometers per second. I mean, you gotta have a pretty long tube. So they said, well, what if instead of having a really long tube, we have a short tube, but we just flow a lot of reactants and then the spinning detonation will just sit in one position and we can video it. Basically, they, they built the RDE not because they, they were trying to build an engine, nope. they just wanted to find a way yes. to be able to keep the detonation going. Yes. Mm -hmm. In basic terms, a rotating detonation engine uses a very violent shockwave that is perpetually rotating in the combustion chamber to generate more thrust than any other rocket engine. As you might imagine, I fell in love with this engine almost immediately, and I wanted to build one. The problem is there's not a lot of information out there on how to build this engine, and there's only a handful of researchers trying to make it work. So, I decided to pack my bags and go to the Technical Institute of Berlin, where Professor Miles and Eric Bach are working on their engine. So, you, you, you're using air, right? Yeah, we have air coming in um, through these, these five red tubes. How much air do you need to make this work? Decent operation, we need to run really a minimum of around 400 grams per second of air. Yeah, so we're talking about half a kilogram of uh, air per second. Correct. Correct. That's insane. It is insane, and here's why. This one liter soda bottle holds more or less 1.2 grams of air. Now imagine 400 times this value coming out of the engine. Actually, you don't have to imagine it, because I asked Miles to run it. After having my fun and realizing how powerful this jet of air was, a question came to mind. What's the difference in thrust if you have just the air and you have actual combustion happening with the air? I would say it's at least double or three times yeah. that, yeah. Three times. Maybe between 50 and 100 newtons 
of thrust just from the air, and then maybe up to 400 or 500 newtons oh, so it's during eight, operation. Okay. It's, it's yeah. more, yeah. Okay, I guess the detonation is pretty powerful, but how do you get a detonation in the first place? So what we use is a small um, uh, detonation tube, so similar to your PDE, but even smaller. Okay, okay, let's pause for a second. So in the last video, I did a, P a PDE, which is a post-detonation engine. Basically, uh, Miles is using another engine to start this engine. He's using a, a linear PDE to start the rotating detonation engine. How cool is that? Sometimes uh, it will add vect out and anchor the flame to the outside of the combustion chamber. We call that a, a pop out. Pop out. Uh, you now no longer have a detonation, but you have this classic deflagration. In the RDE, the flame, the detonation, is only about three, four centimeters or so tall and it's in t contained entirely inside the combustion chamber. What you see coming out is actually just hot water. Because what do you mean? The products of, of, oh, because um, it's hydrogen, hydrogen. of hydrogen okay. combustion is water. And water gets hot, and when it gets hot, it actually glows orange. And the speed of that detonation wave is, say, 2,000 meters per second. So that means that the wave completes a lab in about 200 microseconds. Sponsor time. Can we all agree there's stuff on our phones and computers we really don't want to be stolen? Like important stuff. Credit card info, social security numbers, passwords, browser history. But also embarrassing stuff. Like this photo from when I let Clara paint my hair blonde. That's not good. I don't want this out there. That's why I need a VPN. NordVPN. NordVPN is the fastest VPN in the market. They protect your devices not only from hackers, but also from internet providers and social apps trying to get your data. The feature that I actually love the most is the fact that I can watch content that is not available in my country. Isn't that annoying? I absolutely love this show called Erased. It only has 12 episodes and it's a masterpiece. It's also not available in Portugal. So NordVPN helps me pretend I'm in Canada so I can watch it. If you also want to be protected and you want to watch Erased, as you should, go to nordvpn.com intexa and use the promo code intexa for an exclusive deal of 4 months free. It's risk-free with NordVPN's 30-day money-back guarantee. I swear to God, if someone says on the comments they don't really like anime, I'm gonna rocket myself to their house and rocket slap their face. This show is amazing. It's gonna make you cry. It's gonna make you reconsider your life. Just watch it. Back to the video. As you can imagine, with every single question I asked, I got more excited and anxious to see the engine working. So I asked Miles to give it a run. So I can't be in there when uh, when is no. Going. You're not allowed to be in there when we when we run. We've never been in there. How uh, much how much of a shockwave is putting out like when it starts? We have previously broken the door. We've broken the interior door so that the door has popped open. You know, a two bar pressure wave that'll that'll mess you up. So Miles wouldn't let me inside the room while the engine was working. He said it was too dangerous. To be honest, at first I thought that story he told about the door was just to scare me off. So I called his bluff and I asked him to run the engine while I was standing next to the door. Are you ready, Miles? Are you ready? I, I think I am. I'm not sure. You ready? Jesus! Yeah. I hey. thought he was gonna... Wait a second, can you do it again? <laughs> no, man. <laughs> no. Oh, man, this is fun. <laughs> As the engine starts, you can see a very unstable detonation trying to find its rhythm. And eventually, it does. It stabilizes and starts spinning around the annulus. As you might have noticed, the tests are always around one second long, and the reason for that is how hot this engine gets, which is insanely hot. You can estimate how powerful this engine is just by looking at its size and always shaking the metal structure to which it's connected to. But if you're still not convinced, I have more visual context. I put some tomatoes in front of it. Look at how insane this is. The metal rod holding the tomato got red hot and bended just from the exhaust from the engine. That's just surreal. At this point I was madly in love with this thing, so I asked Miles the most important question. I, I built the PDE, right? I mean, it was decent. 
Would you recommend for me to try and build an RD? Absolutely not. <laughs> Please don't, Joel. Yeah, I don't want to see you die. I'm still going to build one. I know what you're thinking. Joel, if an ancient expert tells you not to build something because you might die, you should probably follow his advice. And you're right. But also, I got a second opinion. If you're doing something very small scales, you run 10 grams per second, like very small mass flow. You don't need a lot of, of mass flow. And Japanese are actually developing very small thruster, like a couple of, like some, anything between 5 to 20 grams per second. I can send you references if you want. I can do better. I can even send you the papers. And he did. He sent me this Japanese article where they built a small transparent RDE. I mean, smaller should be safer, right? So I'm going to follow this article like a cook follows a recipe. I'm going to copy the entire engine with a small twist. I'm going to 3D print it. The best way to get a spinning detonation is by igniting the engine with a detonation. Miles used the PDE, but that's a little bit too complex for my setup. But the Japanese use gunpowder. It's not really easy to get gunpowder here in Portugal, but I have an uncle that has a hunting license and he got me some shotgun shells. They should have gunpowder inside them, right? Uh, this is way easier than I thought. Yeah, that's the gunpowder. It looks like confetti. I know it's weird, but I think it, it is this. We're only gonna know when I burn it. So let's burn it. Ah, oh, that's cool. So actually what I'm looking for, I think is the primer because the primer, once you hit it, uh, it actually explodes, I think. Three, two, one. Yeah. So this is much more powerful than gunpowder. I don't know what's in the primer, but Jesus. And it's out. Okay, so this is the primer from the shotgun shell. Uh, I'm curious to see if I can uh, detonate it using heat. Yep, it works. Three, two, one, do it. Oh God! So I was able to detonate the primer using a glow plug from a diesel engine. Next, I needed to see if the 3D printed setup would be able to survive. I think it's alright. Hello. So, I need to find a way to control the electro valves on the engine. And to do that, I'm gonna use this. An RC car. Yeah, I'm gonna get the RC control out of it and, and use the remote to control the electro valves. So, let's do that. Does it move? Woo! Alright, it's a shame I have to disassemble it. So this is the the circuit that controls the motors. Uh, but for me, instead of controlling the motors, I'm going to control the electro valves. One, two, three electro valves, two motors. It's just perfect. The engine was ready, and I was ready to see it go. To improve the chances of our engine working, I'm going to use pure oxygen as an oxidizer and hydrogen as the fuel. I'm using hydrogen as a fuel because it detonates better. If you don't believe me, this is butane burning. And this is hydrogen. Oh my god. So annoying when that happens. Yeah! <laughs> oh my god! It literally turned your screen on. <laughs> oh! Wait, turn off. Did you listen to that? Did you listen to that? The scream. 
didn't ignite? I don't think it ignited. Oh, it did ignite, but we didn't catch it. The engine did run, but I'm not sure if I got a rotating detonation wave. I'm gonna have to do more research. Well, actually, we are gonna have to do more research because this is gonna take a community effort. For that reason, I'm leaving all the info and 3D models in the description below. If you don't have a 3D printer to test with, don't worry, I can help with that as well. On my last video, I gave away a 3D printer to the most liked comment suggesting a theme for a future video. The winner was Hamad. If you also want to win a 3D printer, all you need to do is subscribe to the channel, leave a like on this video, and post a comment suggesting a theme for a future video. The most liked comment will receive a brand new 3D printer. Um, well, this is everything for today. Thank you so much for watching, and remember, tomatoes are disgusting. See ya!